I'm telling you, Deb, he wants to fuck you. The 17-year-old brunette said to her bunkmate a couple feet above her. Their bedroom was dark, but their conversation was animated. Kim, I know he's a retard. That's fine. I just want to fuck him, too. I can't stand him. But he's pretty fucking hot, Deb said as she stared intensely at the posters of athletic men stuck to the ceiling just above her top bunk. Plus... It's not like he's smart enough to have his feelings hurt after we hook up. Ha! Slut! Kim snickered. You girls talking about me again? A man's whisper came from the door that was just ajar at the head of their bunk. Both girls nearly leapt out of their bed. Shame, shock, and a stifled laugh all readily apparent on their bright red faces. Standing with his grinning face just inside the dorm room was Adrian, one of the school staff at the prep academy the two girls attended. Mr. Rain, you shouldn't sneak up on us like that, Kim said in a scolding fashion at the staff member. <clears throat> she kind of liked him. He was tall, dark, and mysterious. Pretty funny, and you could always see a little peek here and there of some tattoos. She might stray away from her normal bounds for him some night, if she thought he'd go for it. That's right, baby. Adrian's back, and I'm back with him. Oh, Chris Philbrook, my favorite author. Now, this is book two. I know it's been a while, but it takes me some time to set myself right again between books, because they kind of stress me out. Let me tell you what's special about this one. <laughs> Got it autographed by old Chrissy there. Says, welcome to the hashtag ring family. Thanks for stopping by. And don't be a stranger. Chris Philbrick, my favorite. Mwah! The best, all right? I, f I hate this man. I really do. I just hate him. I'll start this off by saying that book two, nothing happens. Absolutely nothing. So it's kind of like, okay. There's nothing too bad in it. Nothing outrageous. Besides, that was the very first page in the book with 17-year-olds lusting after Adrian, who's like 32, 33, I can't remember. But he's an old-ass man. And Chris be writing, like, sketchy stuff with kids all the time. I don't understand. And yeah, they're, like, legal soon, but that's not good enough for me. All right? I don't know how this happens. I don't know. I never in my life do I look at a 17-year-old and go, hmm, that's okay for me. <clears throat> They're gross. Y'all ever seen a 17-year-old? Book two is also good because you get a map of uh, his school thing. I've never in my life ever went back and looked at it. I, it's pretty self-explanatory in the book, so if you like that kind of thing, I guess that's okay. I actually do like books where they put in, like, maps and little prizes and stuff like that. I like that kind of thing. I guess I'll sum up book one real quick. Uh, nothing happened. Adrian left his girlfriend. He went everywhere else except for where his girlfriend was and then he took over a school and now he's bunkering down from zombies and he misses his girlfriend because he has a boner. The end. That was it. That was book one. Now, book two. Hold on. I wrote some notes this time. I'm a little bit more professional. Not really. Because I also told myself I wasn't going to be yelling this whole time, and I've been yelling this whole time. I'm sorry, all right? So we start book two in a flashback to the school when Adrian worked there. Obviously, girls are talking about banging boys, and Adrian is creeping, whispering in the doorway to children at night who are supposed to be asleep. And I read you that first paragraph, but I'm not going to read you the whole thing, but pretty much the first... Oh, sorry. The first page... And the next page are the only pages that I marked because nothing happens in this book. Nothing. But I want to show you these parts. So after Adrian peeks in and tells him some creepy shit, Deb says, Yeah, Mr. Ring, seriously, it's late. And this is clearly girls only time. The thin blonde twirled her hair in a largely adolescent attempt to look sexy. She's trying to look sexy for Adrian. The adult. Adrian laughed in a hushed tone, careful not to wake up the girls sleeping in the other bunks. 
which is creepy. It's creepy. He's being creepy. All right. I don't know. Is it me? Am I just weirded out by this? Should I not be? I think it's creepy. If I found out that this grown man was like creeping into my kid's dorm room at night and like bullshitting with them about sex, I'm a little creeped out. And I ain't no proof. I'm all about being open with kids. Your kids, not other people's kids. So then Adrian says, first, it's Adrian, not Mr. Ring Dev. I'm not your teacher. And secondly, girls, if it's this late and it's girls only time, I shouldn't be able to hear about your attempted sexual conquest in the kitchen downstairs, right? Volume, ladies, it's a school night. That hushed both the girls, with no witty comeback coming to their minds. Both girls let out simultaneous sighs and laid back down in their beds. They were defeated by logic. <laughs> you fucking kidding me? FYI, Deb, he's dirty. You might catch something. Date one of the nerds. They'll get more handsome soon enough. They're probably clean, and they'll also appreciate you a lot more, Adrian said with a smile and a wink. Disgusting. You a grown ass man. Get out of there. What are you doing? Ew. All right. And then there's another line that I highlighted. It's we're still in the beginning, man. But look at this. Am I having a seizure or something? Hold on. I don't know if you can see this. Is that backwards? It was the same shit as it was always ways. What? It was the same shit as it was always ways. Am I having a stroke? What does that mean? That's a nitpick. I, I don't mean to nitpick, all right? But that <laughs> really threw me off. So nothing happens in this book. This is a book about nothing. Adrian spends the whole time, he's in his little school, little bunker, doing nothing, really. He talks about jerking off. And he talks about, oh, he's going through houses in the neighborhood to get supplies. And, you know, being the most baddest motherfucker you've ever seen. So he's going through houses and he gets dog bit. A big old dog bites him on the groin area. Or close to it. So a big old dog in the very beginning of the book bites him on the groin area and then Adrian's out of the game the whole book. So when I tell you this book ain't about nothing, it ain't about nothing. Because Adrian is not only trapped up in this school all alone, but he's dog bit and he can't even move. Oh yeah, and I found out that he was in the army. I don't know why nobody didn't correct me on that. Probably because no one watches this channel, but he was in the army. He got kicked out though. Not because he was bad, but because someone else was bad and he took the fall. Because he's such a good guy and he was going to be okay, but that guy wasn't going to be okay. So then he got kicked out and he became a bouncer at a strip club. And I'm not saying that's bad. I'm just saying that's what happened. I love strip club. Never mind. Don't listen to me. So we do shoot around to some other points of view in this book. It doesn't matter. Most of them die or they're maybe being set up to be important later. <laughs> but that's for another time, okay? That's, I'll, I'll tell you about that later. So we dog bit. I wrote some notes. I gotta look at them. He's... I don't know why I try to film these during the daytime. Because it is so loud around here. I will say I did get some comments in my other video about the first book about his gun obsession. And when I got those comments, I didn't think they, the gun thing was that bad. I was like, you know, some people into guns, some people want to hear about that. But the gun thing is actually bad. It's really bad. We're taking whole chapters just to talk about guns and stupid stuff about guns bullets for guns what color the guns are it's just it's a lot and i know we gotta fill out these pages but god anything but these guns because it's 
grating on me now. It was bad in the first one, but in the second one, it's really bad. It's so bad. Why is it so bad? It's, oh, it's too much guns. I hope we're done with guns by book three. We'll find out. Uh, who knows? We also find out that Adrian got some mommy issues. We find out that mommy was very distant. Mommy didn't really like them too much. He's got some brothers and maybe some sisters. I can't remember. He does have some brothers that were in the army that he really looks up to. Like his whole family's an army family. Which is why I thought maybe just his brothers was in the army and he wasn't. Because he was kind of a loser. But apparently they was all in the army. And his mom was just cold. He didn't like her. He thought she was rude. Blah, blah, blah. Maybe that explains some of Adrian's women issues. I also thought, so he does, he, in the beginning of the book, Adrian starts talking about, like, maybe I'll tell you about Cassie. Maybe I'll tell you. Like, we didn't already know everything you know about Cassie. And then later, when he does bring up Cassie, I thought, I genuinely thought that we were gonna get to know about Cassie's personality and not just about how she put on slutty costumes and he got the banger or how cute she was as his like manic pixie girl. I don't know what that phrase is, but I know that's what Adrian wants or Chris Philbrook wants. Manic pixie dream girl, is that what it is? That's what he wants, all right? That's like what she's supposed to be. She's this little, like, sex kitten that is so cool and down-to-earth, but also you can't save her life because going grocery shopping is more important. But then when he brings Cassie up, he says that he met her in the strip club. She wasn't a stripper. She was a bar girl because she was sexy enough to work in the strip club, but not dirty enough to be a dirty old stripper. No, not her. And, oh my god, it's the best line. So, he sees Cassie in the bar. He's in love right away. Y'all see that dirt on my hand? He's in love right away. He's in love right away. And he, um, he wants to go say hi to her. He can't because a fight breaks out before he's gonna. And then he kicks out the guy or like hoists him up with his big Adrian strength and shoves him out of the bar. And when he goes up to ask Cassie for her number, she's already clocked out and left. She's gone. So he has to do it next time their schedules line up, which they don't always. So Adrian's like always on the lookout for Cassie. I found it. I found it so easy. He says, I walked up to the bar and said, hi, I'll never forget it. The first thing she said to me, I said, hi. Her response, with a smile, was, I don't date ogres. Fortunately, I have a sense of humor, and I laughed. I don't think she expected that. My reply to her was, I was told that you had sex with them, though. My sense of humor is my in with the girls. I might be awkward, but I'm fucking funny. You walked up to this girl, she said not interested, and you said, oh, but you're a fucking hoe, though. I heard you have sex with dudes like me. That's not cute. That's not a sense of humor. That's fuck off. Is that just me? Is this real life? Am I the only one that thinks this way? If you come up, if I was at the bar and you came up to me and I said, hey, I don't have sex with motherfuckers that look like you. That means go away. That means no more. Do not pass go. Do not collect $200. Leave me alone. I am over here having a t good time by myself. Especially if I'm working. Do not be doing that to me when I'm working. I don't care. I don't know you. She denied him right off the bat. But he keeps going and she gets into it, of course, because he's Adrian. Love that line, stresses me out a little bit, but love it. Also, you learn nothing about Cassie. Even in that paragraph, it's talking about how she's not a slut, she's not a stripper and not a slut, but she was dressed slutty because that was the uniform for the bar. She also, she's a redhead, Adrian's into it, he likes that. So it's never Cassie's personality, it's that she's dressed slutty, she's a redhead, Adrian's into it, she wears her, her hair. 
She wears her hair in a ponytail, and Adrian also likes that. They, they, I think he tries to say that they have this, like, playful banter together. It doesn't come off like that to me in the book. It comes off like sexual harassment in the workplace, but whatever floats your boat. I don't really care, actually. And then any, he talks about how much he, how he fell in love with Cassie because she went to his family dinner and she could handle his mom and his dad making sexist and racist jokes, which is fine. I have a family like that with a dad like that. That's another story for another time because it wasn't always like that. But he always has to bring up what she looked like. If he brings up Cassie, he brings up what she looked like. And it gets old. It gets old the way that the guns and the bullets gets old. Why can't you ever just appreciate Cassie for her personality? Because she doesn't have one yet. There's no personality yet. She's just a sexy lady that you're into. Oh, I wish she was here because my wiener's hard. Irritates me. Really irritates me. Jesus. Y'all think that's a good look? It's not a good look. <laughs> I'm so irritated by it. And this is the hero of the story? This is... This is why, when I started reading this book, I thought it was about, like, a bad dude who ended up surviving the zombie apocalypse. It's not. He's basically Jesus, all right? Then, in the book... Oh, I forgot. I totally forgot. In the beginning of the book, we also introduced this teenage girl. She's 16, 17, somewhere in there. Not the ones that you heard about. They died. So the whole beginning of the book about them doesn't matter. They're dead. But there was another one. He was clearing out the school, and he found her uh, starving and gross, and her shirt's ripped off the collar, and her bra straps out. Uh, so he's like, hey, you want to stay here with me? And she's like, no, I don't, because you're creepy. So he gives her a gun, and then he's like, hey, uh, be careful out there, because I, I see this going on. Uh, and who knows what men are gonna do. It's the beginning of the apocalypse. I don't think anyone's out there thinking about that kind of stuff yet. I think they're worried about surviving. Uh, but hey, it's on Adrian's mind. Ooh, it is on Adrian's mind. And then you even cut over to the dad's perspective and he's like, mm. he's like looking at his daughter and his kids. He has a daughter and a son. Uh, and he's like, oh, she's always gonna be that little baby girl that I always knew. Adrian's over here looking at her bra strap, thinking she's gonna go out there and get a bad time from some people in a time where I don't think anyone's thinking about that right now. So she leaves. She goes back to her family. And then Adrian sets up his kid. Like that. All right? All that happens. And then nothing, really. It cuts to them every now and then. Obviously, she's going to be important. Obviously, she's our, like, female protagonist who's coming into the story later. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter right now. Adrian, eventually, his little dog wound heals on his groin. And then he meets his neighbor, who's this old green beret. So he's above Adrian. So Adrian really respects him. He really likes Adrian. It's love at first sight. They become best friends. They start looting houses together. But Gilbert, who's the guy's name, he doesn't really want to. He thinks it's invasive and these people are going to come back. Gilbert's kind of dumb. Whatever. It doesn't matter. He's not important yet. He does become important later. I'm telling you, this book's about nothing. I'm stretching this hard. Gilbert does his thing. Adrian does his thing. Eventually, Abby, that's the girl. Her name's Abby. Her dad, obviously the beta male dad, starts to not be able to take care of his family. So Abby's like, yo, I know this big, buff, strong guy. He's super tall, super sexy, super nerdy, but also... A jock. There's a line in the book that's like, oh, I'm one of those rare geek jocks. I like nerdy stuff. 
but I played football and everything in high school, and I'm super sexy, by the way. I love it. I really love it. This, to me, is perfection. If you give me any time of any day, I will tell you about this book series. It's my favorite. It is my, I am his biggest fan. I got a signed copy of this book, okay? I love it. I think it's great. So eventually the dad decides to, yeah, Abby, let's go to your school. Let's go see Adrian, blah, blah, blah. They go on an adventure. Nothing really happens. The car breaks down. They have to walk. They get into another car. They, they get there. They freaking get there. All right. So now he has Gilbert and he has Abby and her family. The Adrian thought it was going to be, like, stressful, and he thought the dad was going to fight him for, like, dominance, but the dad doesn't because he couldn't take care of his family, obviously, but Adrian can because everybody loves Adrian. He's the best guy to ever live. But he meets Gilbert, the neighbor, the old neighbor, the Green Beret, and then immediately after meets Abby and her family, and then immediately after that, bad guys knock on the door. And they're like, hey, we got to come in. And then Adrian, he goes out because he's big, strong Adrian. He just got over his dog wound. And he goes out there. He, like, uses logic and intimidation to get rid of them. He says that he's going to meet them on a bridge to go do a deal over there because he didn't want them in his house. It's bullshit. You don't have to read it. It's stupid. And then, like, two seconds later, they shoot him in the head. But don't worry, it's not that bad. It just, like, grazed him. The little bullet just grazed him. He's fine. He's a little blood in his eyeballs. But that just makes him look cooler. And then he kills him, or whatever. He gets rid of him. I'm pretty checked out at this point in the book. I'm pretty bored. Nothing has happened. And even when it's happened, it's boring! So then the whole end of the book is just them. Oh no, he doesn't kill them. He doesn't kill them because the whole end of the book is about them waiting for them to retaliate now. Retaliate? Is that the right word? I don't know. I don't even know. Um, and then the book ends. That's it. We're, we're, that's the cliffhanger. The book just ends. Nothing has happened. The only things that have happened is Adrian got dog bit. He cried. He touched his wiener. And then he met some friends. That's like the last chapter of the book. The last chapter. However, I did write down some other stuff. He, so, <laughs> all I have written for like odd stuff that happened in the book is that he breaks into a house. There's a fox and she has kittens, kits, babies. I don't know. I don't know the word for fox babies, whatever. Uh, but they're in the wintertime. And foxes only have babies in the spring. So something weird is happening in the universe where there's animals. Also, there was turkeys earlier in the book. And then he says that there was no turkeys earlier in the book. And he hasn't seen any animals besides deer and a fox. But he, there's a whole chapter about him wanting to eat turkeys. It doesn't matter. And then I wrote down some stuff about the zombies. Because sometimes, sometimes, cool stuff happens with these zombies where I start to like be like oh there's a bigger plan there's something really going on so I the first thing I wrote down was that everyone has it no matter what if you die you come back as a zombie it's everybody has it however if you get bit um that starts the whole process faster you die of infection and then you come back as a zombie pretty standard but I just thought I would note that first Second thing is that it's like the dead of winter in this book, and the zombies don't freeze. They don't freeze, they don't um, lose weight, or really start to decompose, I don't think. Uh, and even when he shoots them, they still ooze like gross stuff. Zombies, bodily fluids. Um, and he even mentions like, oh, they're not skinny, like you see in movies, there's big fat zombies all the time. Which he tries to prove as like a, oh, see how realistic this is? However, I feel like if you're a zombie and you're bit and you're bleeding out, like a lot of the fluids in your body leaves, and then that's why a lot of zombies start to look skinny. Does that make sense? I don't know. Uh, but whatever, this universe is fine. They can stay fat. 
and inflated, even though all their bodily fluids have leaked out. And that's it so far. That's it so far, but there is stuff later in, in the series about the zombies, so I'll, I'll keep you updated on that. But that's it, really. That's book two. Sorry. Sorry if you thought it was going to be something else. It's not. That was it. Book two, Adrian touched his wiener, um, met some friends, and then cliffhanger, uh, the end. They're waiting on a war. So I guess I'll see you back here for book three. And if you see old Chris, let him know that I'm looking for him. Bye!